Buddy Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Tuesday on the program, you know what that means. We got a lot of the usual news to talk about here today, including the Raw Report. Raw, according to Dave, a better book show than New Japan. Maybe not this Raw. But anyway, we'll tell you about it. You know what this Raw had, though? Good wrestling. SmackDown and Raw this week. Both. Lots of good wrestling on the show. The Seth Rollins, AJ Styles match last night, I would go as far as say, was an excellent match. So we'll tell you about that today. And, of course, all of the news on Jeff Hardy. We'll get to the bad news after the break. We're going to open with good news here. Because you know what? I like good news. WWE's Big E threw his neck brace in the trash in a video posted to social media on Monday. In a post to his Instagram story, Big E threw away the brace that he has worn since suffering a broken neck on the March 11 episode of WWE SmackDown. The video marks the first update that Big E has provided in over a month as he continues to recover from the neck injury. At last report, he stated his C1 vertebra was not healing optimally and that he would spend an additional four to six weeks wearing the brace as he hoped to avoid spinal fusion surgery. He suffered the broken neck in a tag team match on SmackDown, taking an overhead belly-to-belly suplex from Ridge Holland, broke C1, C6, said that he narrowly avoided paralysis, stroke, and even death. And now he has thrown the neck brace away, so that is good news to kick off the show here today. All the best to Big E on a full recovery and a return to WWE sooner rather than later. Okay, to the break, when we come back, I believe Mike Sempervivi actually is going to join us here today. So we'll uh, talk to him about all of the news, Jeff Hardy, the Raw Report, AEW tomorrow, NXT 2.0 tonight, and more. Be right back. Observer Live. It's straight, Sempy. Yeah. We changed literally nothing, and mm-hmm. you magically logged in today. If you think that I intentionally sandbagged yesterday and decided not to come on the show when we have Raw reviews coming this week, we have NXT reviews this week, when we have all that news from Japan that we could have talked about yesterday together, you think yesterday was the day I was going to sandbag this? If I'm not mistaken, it was your setup that was having a problem. Apparently, No, it wasn't. yeah, apparently you were the, you talked to Tony. I mean, I had no issue on no, my no, end whatsoever. No, no. I had no problem with my tie line. I, I was able well, to actually call the you test did. line. Actually, no, you I did. didn't. How? Didn't log in. What was because uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, but uh, Filthy got on just fine yesterday. Dave got on just fine yesterday. I'm going to call you after. I'm going to call were you after my shows. Whenever Thunder you Semper what Vivi, you were going to do Thunder Semper Vivi is going to be your new name. Saying I'm sandbagging here? That's what you're saying. By the way, that story... I'm a sandbagger. That story that... uh, And, you know, it wasn't just some rando on the internet. It was actually a wrestler, but... uh, I don't buy that Thunder Rosa was sandbagging in that match. (laughs) I don't think she was deliberately trying to have a bad match. I don't don't think so. I think that she's just, uh, you know... I don't think it was on purpose. Why was Marina Shafir in that match anyway? And I'm a Marina Shafir fan, but it's like she she's got to come a long way. Like when she's not in a blood sport type of situation or a dominant quick like short win situation like I just I some of the moves that they've made with Thunder Rosa in this title reign if she is salty as has been reported. There's been lots of things reported about Thunder Rosa, which I guess is good for her since I know she's on busted open now and she's got all these other side things going on. So I guess any talk is good talk, but when it comes to actually what's happening in her career on AEW, I've been baffled by some of the decisions that they've made. Here's, here's the thing. So this person here goes, Brit disagrees. Uh, Brit and Marina, apparently they liked the tweet about her sandbagging. This is what I this is what I believe, okay? I believe that uh and dude, don't report this as as some story because this is just what I believe. I'm not reporting these as facts, okay? It's your opinion. I in my opinion, okay? Yes. I believe that Thunder Rosa has been a hurt for a long time, okay? 
I think that has affected her matches. I also watch these matches, and uh, it looks to me like she just forgets what the spot is supposed to be, or she thinks a spot's going to come somewhere else. Uh, the matches have not been good, and there have been several with Thunder Rosa that have not been good. But here's the thing with sandbagging, everybody. One of the spots everyone's pointing at is sandbagging is when uh, Marina goes for a vertical suplex, and uh, Thunder Rosa doesn't really go up. And so, do you guys see what happens when Thunder Rosa doesn't really go up? Bro, she practically takes a brain buster on her head, okay? The thing with sandbagging is, your bright idea is to not go up on a suplex, and so the person has to shoot, suplex you, and you practically land on your head? Worked that's out a good real. way. That's a good way to get hurt. Worked out real well for Hardcore Holly with Brock Lesnar, didn't it? Yeah, Brock decided he was going to sandbag a uh, uh, power bomb. What happened to him? Brock just was like, bro, just dropped him right on his head, broke his neck. So this is not the thing that you want to do. Like, I'm going to go up heavy on these dangerous, you know, potentially dangerous moves right here. I think it was just they weren't on the same page. And it's not the first match where Thunder Rose has been on the same page with somebody. She's probably nursing some injuries, which is why she's not maybe thrilled to. That, I think, is a bigger problem. Not she's going in there trying to deliberately sabotage matches. That's what sandbagging is. When you go in there and you deliberately try to sabotage a match. I don't believe that for a second. She doesn't look as dynamic. And I saw her at the end of last year in person. I saw her at the beginning of this year in person. And, yeah, I mean, it, it does seem like... Maybe she's got nagging injuries she's trying to work through, and you know she's got these big feuds and big situations, and she doesn't want to miss them. And maybe, maybe that's it. And this may be more of a question for Lance, but and I'm not saying that this is happening with Thunder Rosa or anything, but I, I wonder. It's like any athlete gets in their own head and they go through slumps. And when you were working every night in that type of era, I mean, you would basically. Get, it's like a hitter. You would hit yourself out of it. You would work yourself out of it, or you would work yourself out of the business. Have you ever gotten in your own head or been in a stretch of time where it just, you're trying to overcompensate. You're thinking about all this stuff you did wrong. You're not concentrating on the stuff you do well. Has that ever happened to you in your no, career? Never. Never? No. I just had a really bad match with Vinny and I just quit. <laughs> That's what happened. I'll do it. I was just like, I'm done. This sucks. This ain't fun anymore. I'm out of here. I'm taking kiddie pool bumps from here on up. We should probably talk about Jeff Hardy. Well, that's, big, yeah, that's a bigger story than you being unable to, to connect. Bring it down here. Okay, uh, Jeff Hardy has been suspended by AEW in the aftermath of his DUI arrest. AEW President CEO Tony Khan issued a statement on Tuesday announcing Hardy is suspended without pay, can only return to the company after completing treatment and maintaining his sobriety. Khan wrote that Hardy has indicated he's open to receiving treatment. Quote, we are able to resume contact with Jeff Hardy this afternoon. AEW does not condone, uh, condone Jeff's alleged behavior. We made it clear to Jeff that we will assist in getting treatment for substance abuse issues, which he has indicated he is open to receiving. In the interim, he is suspended without pay. He can only return to AEW upon successfully completing treatment and maintaining his sobriety. And then he sends out the information if you or a loved one needs help, reach out to SAMHSA's National Helpline, 1-800-622-HELP. For those of you with cell phones, 1-800-662-4357. Apparently, the reason they uh, made no announcements yesterday was because uh, they have. I guess he wanted to actually talk to Jeff Hardy uh, before making this announcement. Obviously, uh, yesterday, I think during the show, you know, they were probably still trying to figure out what they were going to do. And uh, I think when this when this news first came out, uh, there were not cooler heads, and then apparently cooler heads prevailed, and Tony decided, okay, well. You know, this is my idea, but obviously you got to run it by Jeff. You know, are you willing to consider rehab? Because I think if Jeff said no, they just fired him. I don't know that for sure, but uh, this seems to be something that they uh, that they discussed together. Matt Hardy tweeted, "It was disheartening to hear the news about my brother yesterday. Recovery is not a linear process. I will continue to do whatever I can to help my brother be healthy. Being healthy and well is the most important thing for Jeff, his wife, his children, and our family at this time." Footage of his arrest was released, TMZ first to publish the video, which shows three police officers drawing their guns. 
An officer can be seen approaching the passenger side door of the vehicle quickly pointing his firearms toward Hardy in the driver's seat. A second officer approaches with his gun drawn as well. A third officer approaches before Jeff exits the car. We got several 911 calls on you, an officer can be heard saying. Do you know why we might have gotten some calls? You were all over the road. What's going on with that? The officer asked before saying he could not hear Hardy's response. Officer would later say they got three or four 911 calls before uh, all reporting Hardy is driving. Hardy mentioned that he has a doctor's appointment upcoming to have a brain scan. Later in the video, he admits to having drank shots of fireball before getting behind the wheel. At the end of the video, one of the officers informs Hardy that he is under arrest. Notes the time is 9.45 a.m. Arrest records show he was booked at 12.45 later in the day. So this was 9, 9.54 in the morning? I thought the uh, the earlier reports were that it was like in the middle of, like late at night or something like that. This is 9, 9.54 a.m., apparently. So he was arrested. He was put in jail. 0. 0.294. It's insane. 0. 0.294. That's almost quadruple the legal limit. Facing charges of DUI, driving with a suspended license, violating an interlock restriction. Which, by the way, how do you do that? How do you get into the car? <laughs> Jeff's third DUI arrest since 2018. Bailed out at uh, on a $3,500 bond. And uh, quite frankly, I mean, he's not in the ladder match tonight. And uh, Discovery was told to, quote, stop all promotion of Jeff Hardy in any commercials or anywhere else immediately. We'll get Mike Sots after the break. If he has any, back in a moment, Observer Live. He is a former bar manager, or maybe currently, I don't even know. How much you got to drink to blow a point two nine four? Well, let's just say he's like 200 pounds. I mean, there's a liquor, <laughs> liquor store business mostly, but yeah, bars, bars as well. But like, if he's 200 pounds, I mean, that's like drinking... Like 12 or 15 shots or 12 or 15 12 ounce beers in like an hour to get up to that level. Like he was obviously in a stupor. They had to pull weapons. That's what on they him said. Because... They actually use that term. He was in yeah. a stupor. I mean, that's, that's, I, that's, I think the, I don't know if it's the, it's the accepted term. I don't know if it's the legal term, but that's where you're at. And to be honest, where you go after that, like 0.35 with a guy with a lot of mileage on him, that can kill you. Like, it, it can absolutely kill you. Once you get to point four, it's absolutely going to kill you. That's how close this guy was. And I didn't also realize until just before we went on the air that this was in the morning, which doesn't really make a difference except for the fact that watching the cars go by on the busy highway and the tractor trailers and everything, it's like... It, it, it could have been a horrible tragedy, and it's happened too many times over and over again. And I know Matt said he's exactly right. It is not linear. Recovery is not linear. Recovery is different for everybody. But there's a line in there where it says it only works if you work it. And Jeff Hardy has several times said, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm not going to work it. I'm fine. He is not fine, and he needs to get the help. His employment for AEW rides on that. I don't know whether he'll care about that or not. He's got a history of really not caring about that, but we'll see. We'll also see if he ends up in Tijuana. I guess he's not going to be in Tijuana this weekend for AAA. I would, I would think not. I would hope not. I want to talk about the issue that he was uh, telling the officers he had to go for a brain scan. You got to go to a, for a brain scan, but you're doing a ladder. You're scheduled for a ladder match on Wednesday, dude. I know there's a lot of people, and I know people are going to jump all over AEW. And AEW is the one where it's it's uh, the most public. But dude, there's a lot of injuries all over this business in every major company. I don't want to say that people are like hiding their injuries, but there are definitely people. Actually, I will say that. There are people hiding their injuries, and there are other injuries that have come out, and uh, there's just a lot of badly beat-up people, and uh, I think that every company needs to take better care in the sense that if someone is clearly hurt, don't book them. 
Don't ask them. Just don't book them. If you ask them, they're gonna they're gonna want to do it. This so feels you, like vanity you just stuff have anyway. To pretty much say no. I don't mean to jump on the bucks. I guess I am jumping on the bucks. Like you got your match with the Hardy Boys. They won. You had them them win. Cool. You got to live your your dream, and that was awesome. But like, it probably should have happened as soon as the Hardys went in there. But okay, hindsight's twenty twenty. You had the match. Like. <laughs> These are issues aren't new. On top of the fact that they're not fresh, and it really wait. What's isn't this have to do with anyway. the Bucks? Because why are they having a ladder match? Well, this has nothing to do with the Bucks. Tony's the one that booked the match. Okay, well, Tony then. I, I guess yes. I'll, then I'll put it all on Tony then. But like, shouldn't somebody step up and go? Okay, we we had the match. That was cool. Like. Exit stage left for a while until you either you're ready to come back or whatever because they got a zillion teams that are more effective than the Hardys anyway that they're not using. I just think we had the match. We got it out of the way. It should have been over um, um, at double or nothing. That's me. We've, uh... Oh, this. Yeah, the, well, we, we were talking about the ladder match. It's not uh, taking place. Uh, on a completely different note... Can, Changing gears. We can come back to this later if you want to, but uh, I cannot believe my eyes when I saw this one. And thank God Lance is on the show at 2 Pacific 5 Eastern so I can get his Uh-oh. thoughts. The unique and infamous Reverse Battle Royal <laughs> is returning for Sunday's Impact Slammiversary. I blame Lance. First announced in 2006 as part of the Fight for the Right tournament. The match... (laughs) As part of the fight for you, right? A hat on a hat. Which earned worst worked match honors in that year's (laughs) Wrestling Observer Newsletter Awards. Featured three parts. 18 wrestlers start outside the ring with the goal of getting into the ring. After the first seven men get into the ring, everyone else is eliminated, and the rules then become a conventional battle royal. When the match gets down to two men, it becomes a single match. It is unknown if Impact will stick to the same rules this time around. The match will be on the free Slammiversary pre-show. At least you have to pay for it. You know what? I gotta say, I gotta say two things right here. It's Slammiversary, mm-hmm. so that's why they're doing a reverse battle royal. They want <laughs> okay, good. No sl- tradition, I guess. Yes, exactly. It's Slammiversary, so it's Fair an enough. anniversary show, and clearly they want to go back into the past and pick some match that hasn't been done out of the the archives but you know there's like other stupid matches they did <laughs> but that's the problem you with know? that's the the legacy of impact is a lot of those stupid matches that they ended up doing i mean we're going to bring why back... didn't they do uh king of the mountain why didn't they do the barbed wire christmas tree match easy easy anthem has got a long-term investment here they they don't worry They'll, there will be plenty of time to bring back those things the hard 10 tournament the thing where homicide climb up because of whatever and, and get actually the X and whatnot i'm sorry they are doing a a king of the mountain match but it's a queen of the mountain match with the women they got queen of the mountain they got ultimate x uh they got monsters ball is Taryn Terrell coming back? Honor no more. And yes, the reverse battle royal. Bro, a barbed wire Christmas tree match would have been way better. Because all you have to do is just like a barbed wire Christmas tree. It's just a hardcore match. But uh, this this stupid reverse battle royal. But you know what? You know what? <laughs> yes. But. I can't believe I'm going to defend it, but I'm going <laughs> to. Of course. Okay? And this is not because I like Lance. <laughs> I'm actually disgusted that he okay this way. <laughs> even though it probably wasn't his call at all. But listen, I don't think so. Here's my one defense of this match, all right? Were we not just talking about Jeff Hardy and how banged up and injured he is and how he has a brain scan scheduled and then he gets booked in a ladder match and how I said there's people in every single promotion that are working hurt, that are hiding injuries, that are banged up. Remember when I was just talking about that? We need to take better care of people? I do. Well, as God is my witness... And I don't know where this took place, but uh, I got a uh, I got a DM the other day because apparently on one of the other shows we were talking about how stupid the reverse battle royal was. I don't even know why we were talking about it. I think it might have been because uh, we were celebrating my birthday, 
And I was noting that uh, Vinny's birthday is uh, October 10th. And I always remember because there was a horrible TNA pay per view on 10 10 10 that he was forced to watch on his birthday. So we might have been talking about the reverse battle royal then. But, or this person says the Dominion review. Anyway, the point doesn't matter. Point is, we were talking about another show, and then some bloke DM'd me and he said, dude, quit talking trash about the reverse battle royal. Because I was in one this weekend, and it was the easiest payday I ever got. So at the end of the day, we got a match here. Nobody's going to get hurt. You're literally fighting to try to get into a ring. It's easy. Take care of some bodies. And hey, that's what this business is about, right? Take care of each other. Take care of yourself. Protect yourself at all times. They say that in MMA. But for some reason, people haven't figured that out in the fake one. Protect yourself at all times. Yeah. I can respect that. I can absolutely respect that. Now, the only problem is, though, you know, there's only so many times somebody can do the, you know, in the crowd, stealing the beer or the soda gimmick. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to have to parse that out there with all those guys. What does this have to do with the reverse battle royal? Because they're going to be outside the ring. Well, yeah, but they're not going to be in the crowd. You're just at ringside. You're just well, ringside pretending like you can't get into a ring, which is so dumb. Who is going to be on the announcing team that ends up getting in because that happens every time there's one of these things? I don't know, but you know what? If I had to work a match at Slammiversary and my options were, I don't think my option would be Queen of the Mountain, but... Barbed Wire Christmas Ultimate tree. X, where I could almost kill myself. Monster's Ball, where I could almost kill myself. Yeah, if they had a barbed wire Christmas tree match, I could get jabbed and punctured with barbed wire. Or a reverse battle royal. Tell you which one I'm picking. No. Yeah. Especially if I get paid the same. I'm not here for five-star ratings in the Observer, everybody. I'm here to have fun and get paid and not get hurt. Yeah, not drop anybody on their head. Yes. Yes. MGF and I could have had the match of a lifetime. Except who's going to be the heel? SmackDown, 1.914 million viewers on Fox. Down 1% from the previous week. 0.44 rating in 18 to 49. Fourth among network TV programming. Trailing different programs all related to the NBA Finals. Guys, listen, I don't watch sports, okay? I don't. You're welcome to make fun of me, but, bro, dude. Yes? It's not even like... Oh, the NBA season has been going on since March. The NBA finals, the finals, Mm -hmm. March, April, May, four months. What kind of finals take four months? Well, Brian, I think even more amazing to you or what should be is the fact that the Stanley Cup finals, you know, Canada sport, winter sport. They'll be taking place and finishing up way after the NBA Finals are done. That's my, my back in a moment. <laughs> Get my point. What? The word playoff. The very word playoff. Playoff. That word. Yes. That word indicates a finality. The yeah. end. The end of a road. Okay. They have the end of the road. Yeah, it's the finals. I realize that, but dude, these playoffs have been going on for four months. Why don't you just call the season? You do the season. And then you do the playoffs, which should be like two, three weeks, and then you do the finals. Instead, this person's like, well, you got 16 teams doing a best of seven. It's like, that sounds like a season. It doesn't oh, sound God. like, how long's a season? 18 months? We've got an 18-month season, then five months of playoffs. What are you bitching about? Six All these weeks tournaments of finals. taking place in AEW, for God, Christ's help. sakes. You stop it. God, you know nothing help. about sports. Stop it. You're going to just completely ruin the name of the byline. Stop it. Go Warriors. I wasn't hired by Sports Byline to talk sports. We know that. That's Tittle's job. Does a great job, too. I'm sick of these these playoffs. That's my point. I'm sick of them. Maybe the playoffs are sick of you, Brian. Get them over with. Get them over with so we can can move on to the the 34-month NHL season. (laughs) I'd be happy happy to talk about uh, Yeah, it is, isn't it? You know, oh, finally, look, we agree. The NHL, NBA, and Major League Baseball should all cut games, and they all will not because 
It's a lot of money lost. NBA, you, you know these that. these playoffs are like uh, you know the, the the Return of the King. They the movie ended like nine times. People were like, "Bro, is this movie over yet, dude? We've seen it's ended eight times already. How many endings do we need?" That's what I feel like when I hear about these playoffs. Oh, the playoffs still going on. Dude, these playoffs started before like a, COVID. Like a, this is the Lazarus issue in your life that, you know, continues to nip at your Achilles. Don't even here. get me started on Magic the Gathering. <laughs> what? Yeah, I had to talk about that yesterday. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Playoffs are awesome. Get out of here. Ms. TV opened up with Paul Heyman. No and, Maurice. Uh, long story short, out came uh, Riddle. You should have Maurice on. And they've added a stipulation. If Riddle beats Roman Reigns in the championship match, he becomes the champion. Can you believe it? <laughs> wow. But if he loses, he can never <laughs> challenge for the title again as long as Roman Reigns is the champion. Vince really did revolutionize the business, didn't he? Yeah. I don't buy this tip for a moment, but that's what they said. <laughs> that led us to Jimmy Uso versus Montez Ford. And uh, the match was all right, but the finish was just idiotic. So uh, it's the usual WWE deal. No one's allowed to beat the Usos. So uh, we need to set up challengers who nobody believes are going to win. But we can't convince you that they'll win by actually letting them beat the Usos. They got to win by countout last week by the skin of their teeth. And then this week we're going to do a singles match, and then Jimmy Uso beats Montez Ford. What a geek. These Street Profits, God bless them, they are absolute geeks. They cannot, for the life of them, beat the Usos, but they're going to be getting a tag team title match, and, and look, I, I wanna, am supposed to believe they can win. I don't want to draw this out, but I just want to throw this in here because I, the pers- you know the person that I'm talking to here who said, well, what if Angelo beats Jay next week? The Usos never lose. Why do you have to do 50-50 with them anyway after a decade of the Usos being the Usos? Why can you not just have... A victory last week, a clean win, and then this week you actually get a victory. Who cares if right now Montez is shining? So you want to give Angelo Dawkins a win next week. Why do you need 50-50 booking here when the Usos are as strong as they are? Who cares? I'll bet you, here on the air, $5 that there is no chance that Dawkins gets a win next week, like a pinfall. He may get like a distraction count out or a DQ win, but there ain't no way next week he's getting a pinfall. I'll bet you five bucks right now. I wouldn't take that bet because with how they've been booked, with how they think this is an actual good thing, I, I, I would believe it. I think it's probably going to happen your way. This person is making fun of me for doing five bucks. So I'm afraid if I bet like 50 bucks, they'll, they'll do that finish just to take money out of my pocket. <laughs> exactly. There'll be side bets on your action. Seth Rollins did an interview, and uh, this bloke needs to quit watching Joker before I lose my mind. Laughing like an idiot, and uh, talks about Cody. He meant every word he said, but at the same time, uh, he's happy that he you know destroyed the guy afterwards with a sledgehammer, and he plans to win Money in the Bank after he beats AJ Styles tonight. They actually announced, they actually billed Becky Lynch versus Dana Brooke for the 24-7 title. So Becky comes out, and uh, speaking of geeks, she absolutely beats the living hell out of Dana Brooke before the match starts. She kills her, she mocks her, she ridicules her championship, and then she goes to beat her up again, and Asuka runs down. And Asuka actually did a a great uh, fiery comeback and sent Becky packing, but yeah. What Becky walking out there was great it, it was how beneath her everything was. And then for her to get at it the way that she did, it's a way out of this thing, which was a way to do things. That's for sure. No, Darkness M21. Rollins' gimmick is not good. It sucks. It absolutely sucks. Okay? Alexa Bliss and Liv Morgan versus Dewdrop and Nikki Ash. Oh, They've boy. totally dropped the Nikki Ash Dewdrop storyline where Dewdrop wanted her to be serious and stop being a clown. She's out there as a superhero. She gets beat and uh Alexa and Liv Morgan qualify for Money in the Bank and uh zero follow up to this Dewdrop Nikki Ash thing. Ezekiel Kevin Owens got 8 minutes good match because yes, Kevin Owens is involved. And as much as I hate these absolute stupid finishes they do in WWE. I have to admit, 
that when Kevin Owens ends up outside and he hears one of the announcers calling him Ezekiel and he jumps up on the table and he starts screaming at them, this guy's name is Elias. His name isn't Ezekiel. He's Elias. Why do you guys? And all of a sudden the bell rings because he got counted out. That was a good count out. And so he's absolutely furious and he storms backstage. And then Ezekiel cuts a promo and he says, you know what? I talked to my brother Elias. And he's going to be here next week for a concert. And, you know, I wasn't thinking that they were going to do this, but apparently they are. They're going to put a fake beard on Elias and a fake wig. And uh, and he's going to play his... He's going to play No hologram? Elias. No, apparently they're going to do a wig and a, a beard, it sounds like. <laughs> Which, of course, the problem is then Kevin Owens can't really do anything because there's no way they can get the wig and the beard on so it won't fall off during a brawl. I mean, maybe they can, but... I'm skeptical. Well, the wonders of CGI and those types of, uh, but they can do the deal. Now. I'm I'm hoping they actually do the deal where uh, Elias is in the ring for the concert. They cut backstage. Kevin Owens is rushing out to beat him up, and then uh, Ezekiel hits him with a guitar and lays him out. So you know we have an appearance by both of them here. Is Kevin Owens in the Hall of Awesome? I think so. He should be. If not, he's going to be before too long. We had uh, MVP beating Cedric Alexander. That's what happened. Then we have uh, AJ Styles doing a promo, which led to Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles. They went 15 minutes, and bro, this match was awesome. They had a great pro wrestling match, and AJ's doing all of his high spots, but then his leg gets cut off. Not actually, you know, cut off, but you know what I'm saying. And then finally, uh, they do all their near falls at the end. Rollins misses the frog splash. Styles goes for the clash. Rollins counters it, grabs the bad leg, pins him. This was a great match. And uh, Seth won clean. And he is going to money in the bank. And poor AJ is not. We Who pulled had... off Mad Dog Vashon's leg? Was that Kevin Nash? Yes. We had uh, Riddle versus Ciampa. They only got four minutes, and poor Ciampa didn't even get an entrance. But, man, for those four minutes and 35 seconds, they had a good match. And uh, finally, at the end, Riddle hits the floating bro, hits him with the RKO, pins him. Uh, this was this was good action. A lot of good action on this show, wrestling-wise. We had a Bianca interview, which led to Rhea Ripley cutting a promo. And this was actually one of the best promos Rhea's ever cut in WWE. She actually cut a very, very good promo. And uh, they're doing everything they can to build up Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, and uh, could be a title change. They actually could do a title change here. I guess we'll see. But uh, this was a good interview. Chad Gable beat Ali. They only got three minutes, but it was a very, very good three minutes. Chaos Theory suplex after distraction from Otis. Chad Gable gets the win. Hopefully Ali is continuing on with his uh, mindset of, ah, who cares? Just go make my money. Because... Uh, if he's thinking it, if he's overthinking it, he's going to be in a crabby mood. Veer Mahan beat Rey Mysterio. <laughs> beat up Dominic outside. You teach him that close Beat line? up Rey. Put him in the cervical clutch. <laughs> Submitted this poor bloke. What clothesline? What are you talking about? You didn't see the clothesline that he missed when Mysterio, he went to the wrong side. He's got his right arm out like this. Mysterio goes by him to the left. He winged around and put throw the clothesline. You didn't see that? Nah, I missed that one. Oh, man. <laughs> I did see when he tried the gut buster and dropped Ray's <laughs> jaw right on his knee. That looked like it sucked. Next hmm. week, Becky Lynch versus Asuka. Women's Money in the Bank qualifier. Elias will do his concert, and that's all we know about the show. And then the main event, bro, I cannot believe my eyes. It's a pose down. <laughs> you ever see those? Uh, uh, remember when Vince was getting the lap dance from Sable? And uh, they used these, you know, pictures all over the internet for memes. Dude. We had the same thing backstage for this pose down. Stacy Keebler. Was it Stacy? Oh yeah, Stacy. Yeah. yeah, whoever. <laughs> what is up with this Vince? What a weird guy. But anyway, <laughs> they have a pose down. And they're out there flexing their muscles. Oil it up. They're all oiled up and flexing their muscles. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is the main event of Raw? Uh, These yes. dudes flexing their muscles while covered Strong in oil. Muscles. Where was my daughter? 
vascular. I'll never, I'll never forget when my six-year-old daughter walked in one day, and Randy Orton was just making an entrance. All he had to do was making an entrance, and her exact words were, "Why is he flaunting his naked body?" And then she walked out disgusted. <laughs> Imagine if she'd seen this. They flex and they, you know, flaunt oh, their naked bodies, <laughs> Wait, what? and then. What? You all right over there? <laughs> what are you raising your own little house on the prairie? I mean, where is she getting? Why is she busting in with such a Puritan thought in her mind, just kicking the door open like, Daddy, Father, why is this man in such a state of undress, showing off his body and then storms out? Where are my Captain Crunch? You should hear what these children say. Don't you remember having children? I got one. Yes. They say the weirdest things. There was even a TV show about it. Anyway. Oh. The darndest, I guess. Then theory, he squirts goo all over Bobby Lashley. And then... Uh, Cut him right in the eye. You don't want to do that. People get upset with you when you do that. God. You'd be careful where you squirt that stuff. Yeah. This segment was bizarre. It's supposed to make me want to see him wrestle. Anyway, that was wrong. They didn't actually advertise this as the main event either. They just kept saying. Gee, I wonder why. (laughs) One guy was excited for this to be the main event. (laughs) It's coming up later. That's all they said. (laughs) And so, and for one guy, I bet you it did. I did like, too, there was a little slip up where. uh, uh, I'll say. Adam Pierce said, I think he, when he was trying to say podium, he said posium. And actually. I think it was called the posium. It should be called the posium. Yes. Like, is that an official term? Like the, the the most muscular, which pops me every time. That's it's the name so of the ridiculous. pose, the most muscular. It's just so ridiculous. It's great. Bodybuilding is ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Joe Weeder. Listen, I, I was all about working out and everything like that, but bodybuilding is weird, especially you competitions. <laughs> yeah. Ronnie Coleman arms? Especially because, like, when I was, actually, I'd get those bodybuilding magazines, and I'd look at, like, the Olympia and it's like, they all look exactly the same. <laughs> you know what I'm Freakish. saying? Yes. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Chat. Talk about bodybuilding. They know nothing. I didn't know we had a bunch of Olympians in there. Oh, yeah. Or Mr. Olympias. Miss Olympias. They want to be. You ever seen that lineup and it's like there's five There's five men left in Mr. Olympia? Mm-hmm. And it's like, they all look exactly the same. Yeah, and then yeah, there's like, well, his he's got deeper striations in his buttocks. Striations. What? He does. They all look striated to me. Oh well, his uh, uh you know, his uh, shoulder to waist ratio is better than Bob's. <laughs> well, yeah, he's got wider shoulders. He was born that way. He didn't get that in the gym. He was born with smaller, a smaller hip structure and a wider shoulder structure. You ever see one of those guys who have the, the split down their biceps? They actually have a natural split. Yeah, actually... I got one right there. Look at that. Huh? Yeah? Can you switch the camera? My arm hurts. There we go. Huh? Look at that. Look at my insertion point. See that? That right there? <laughs> I don't need to see your insertion point. Well, anyway... I would have come in third last night. Easy. Easy. <sighs> no way. Yep. No way. Mm-hmm. Dude, Byron Saxon would have jumped up from behind that table. And Byron Saxton, you. get out of here. Why do you think they like Byron? Byron's a good-looking guy, looks fantastic in a suit. Dude, dude's dude got it, too. All flexed up and everything. He's a Vince guy. I like that Byron Saxton. Yeah. Hey, we're out of here, everybody. I want to thank you all for listening here today. I'll be back in about an hour with Lance, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, video.f4wonline.com. And uh, later on tonight, Brian and Vinny show Raw 25. Check it out. And uh, that's it, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next time. Wrestling Observer Live.